Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about PC Linux OS. PC Linux OS, as far as I understand it, is based upon Mandriva. It uses the RPM package management system. It is distributed as a live CD, just like Ubuntu is. But unlike traditional RPM-based distributions, it uses the apt package management system instead of yum with Synaptic, which normally a lot of them do use package kit or some variation of that. This uses Synaptic, which in a lot of cases is e easier to use. It boasts having over 12,000 RPMs in their repository, very cool. And you'll see here something I didn't notice before, it has something called My Live CD, which can take a snapshot of your current installation and compress it into an ISO, just like Remaster Sys for Ubuntu, so very, very nice. So let me go ahead and pull up this Live CD that I've got running. I had it installed on my laptop, but my laptop doesn't capture as well as my desktop. You'll see here it doesn't have the VirtualBox editions running, at least not version 3.2, so it didn't go full screen. Not a big deal, very easy to install after the fact. Lots and lots of stuff you'll see here out of the box. You've got the, of course, install PC Linux OS, your network center, which since I'm on a desktop with a wired connection, you are only seeing the wired connection. If I were on my laptop, my laptop has an Intel wireless card and a Broadcom wireless card. Both of them show up working out of the box, even on the live CD, which is something that Ubuntu and Linux Mint cannot claim. One thing I do like about the Live CD is it gives you the username and password assigned to the Live CD. If you're using this just as a live environment, a lot of them don't come with that. And of course they are what you'd think they'd be. But looking down here at the bottom, you've got your devices list. See there's nothing plugged in. You've got the ability to show the desktop, the ability to configure your desktop. See here you've got system settings, lots and lots of different options there. KDE standard. You've got configure your computer. And it's asking for the root password, so perfect that I mentioned that earlier. This is one thing that actually defines PC Linux OS. It has its own control center. Now this is based off the one that comes with Mandriva, which is DrakeConf. But you can go through and set your sharing, your network services, networking information, all sorts of different information, clumps it all into one place. Very helpful, very useful. And of course here we've got Dolphin, your file manager, where you can just browse through the files on the system. And Synaptic Package Manager, which we talked about earlier. We'll give it that root password again. And you'll see here it's showing everything that's already installed. If I wanted to search for something, I can. And it doesn't appear to find it, but that could have something to do with my repositories. I see it's only got this one selected. There are tons and tons available, though. So if I wanted to select one a little bit closer to me, I can reload the repositories. And you see, I actually added a separate repository there. I just added one that was a little bit closer to myself and reloaded from it. And you'll see after I reloaded the repositories, it's actually pulled up GTK record my desktop, QT record my desktop, and record my desktop. So if I wanted to install these, I could very easily, just by right-clicking and marking for installation, and then applying when done. Just like using Ubuntu Synaptic Package Manager, no real difference there. Over here you've got the traditional KDE system tray, all those things you'd expect. The ability to add widgets and activities and panels, traditional KDE stuff. Now here's one little difference. Instead of the kickoff menu by default, we've got a traditional applications menu. Lots and lots of applications there. I'm not going to take the time to go through every single one. One thing I will mention is PC Linux seems to come with a ton more applications out of the box than most other distributions. Makes me kind of wonder how Ubuntu and other distributions can be having such a hard time coming up with space when a, a distribution like this one comes with so much pre-installed. You see there are even more stuff pre-installed. Comp is pre-installed, of course. Lexmark stuff pre-installed. See, so you've got an Emerald Theme Manager. So that's pretty much the KDE version of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GNOME version. One thing I did forget to mention, if you go to the Get PC Linux OS on here, you've got all these different versions you can select from. You've got the KDE, which also has a KDE Mini version. See, you've got full version and a Mini Me version, which is a very minimal KDE install. You've got GNOME and GNOME Zen Mini. See here, it's a very Zen-like interface, very minimal GNOME desktop with a minimal amount of applications. Should give you a much smaller installation. You've got LXDE, XFCE, and Enlightenment. So you've got your choice of desktops there. If you have an older system that may not run GNOME or KDE very well, you might try LXDE or XFCE. And if you like the Enlightenment desktop environment, you can try that. But let's go ahead and look at GNOME because I've got that running as well. You see here it looks kind of similar to the KDE one as far as what's on the desktop. It looks like a very standard GNOME install with their custom theme on it. See, it's got this slickness theme on it. If I go into Backgrounds... A lot of the traditional GNOME backgrounds come with it. But just like the other one, if I go under Applications, it's even got a section for more applications because so many things come pre-installed. 
monitoring printing, all sorts of those Lexmark things again. Different, three different terminals come by default. Uh, archiving documentation, editors. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every single one of these. By the way, Bleachbit, a very handy piece of, piece of software. Where I mentioned Computer Janitor in the Ubuntu 10.10 .10 video the other day, someone said Bleachbit is a much better alternative. You see if you come in here, it'll check for updates. You can start it on its own. You can tell it to deep scan and look for all sorts of things to clean up Firefox, clean up your system. Lots of great things in there. Bleachbit is supposed to be a very nice piece of software. I have not had a chance to use it yet. So, under games, again, lots and lots of games. I will mention Nibbles is supposed to be a very nice Worms clone. But under graphics, you've of course got the GIMP pre-installed. Apparently this didn't take too much space. It's only 693 megabytes for either of these downloads. It's got Dropbox pre-installed, it's got a Gmail notifier, it's got a Skype pre-installed. It has the Pino, Twitter, and Identica client. It does not have OpenOffice, but it has the ability to download it. I assume that is how they managed to get so many things on there, as they didn't include the really large OpenOffice. They give you Abbey Word, Numeric, and a couple of other things instead. You have Synaptic and a repository speed test, which allows you to find the fastest repository for wherever you are. You have a couple of sound things pre-installed, including Audacity and Rhythmbox. You've got the ability to install it, and some pre-installed video apps, including Record My Desktop, which is very handy, and Cheese is the webcam booth. Now, in my experience, I started this up on my laptop. I had some problems with the live CD wanting to freeze up on me. Very minimal problems. Once I got it installed, it was one of those everything just works distros. A lot like Linux Mint, but one step even further than that. Because the graphics worked out of the box, the wireless, including the Broadcom wireless, worked out of the box. It was really just a case of everything just worked. Now the repositories are not quite as big as those of Ubuntu or Linux Mint, but they are very competitive, they've got a lot of software in them. There's probably a million and twelve other things I could say about PC Linux, but go ahead, download it, and give it a try. Either version, the KDE or GNOME, whatever your preference is, any of the different desktop environments, just download it, give it a shot, it's about 700 megabytes. So this is definitely a recommend for new users, for intermediate users, or for advanced users. If you want everything to just work out of the box, and you want to be familiar and comfortable with something, one thing I would say is it does not have the software center like Ubuntu does, but Synaptic is really not that difficult to use once you get used to it. So that's all I've got to say about PC Linux. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.